let's go out to the opposite of Texas, Anchorage, Alaska, and talk. To, yeah, that's right. To Anchorage, Alaska. Let's talk to Kendall. What is up, Kendall? Hi, Dr. John. How are you doing today? Partying. What are you up to? Not much. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um, so I, I guess I'll kind of fill you in on what's going on and then ask my question. Um, so my mom just started dating, uh, after 11 years since my dad passed away. Um, and my mom says that, uh, he makes her super happy and treats her well, but he has a really concerning past and current behaviors that are worrisome. And I have two little sisters who are still living at home who won't even be in the same room as him. And part of that is definitely um, the change of my mom dating for the first time, but they voice that they're not comfortable around him and he hasn't shown much effort into getting to know them. And then the other part of this is he has a lot to gain from dating or possibly marrying my mom. She's not super rich, but she has a lot of assets and he um, only has a car. Mm. So I'm just kind of looking for help. How old are are you, Kendall? Uh, 22. 22. Okay. How old are your sisters? Um, 18 and 11. Okay. Um, what was your dad's name? Uh, Ed. Ed? Was he pretty awesome? Yeah. You still have some good memories of him? Yeah. How'd he pass away? Um, sorry. No, it's okay. Take your time. I. Uh, he had a random heart attack while we were all out hiking. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. When, when I was 11. My goodness. That's and t- so my mom was left as a single mom with five kids after that. Jeez. Wow. And that's still right there at the surface, huh? You miss him, don't you? Yeah. It, it's been tough just processing through someone else being there. Yeah. Well, that that's my first, uh, that was going to be my first question. Sometimes red flags emerge just because this new guy's not my dad. And my dad was freaking awesome. Yeah. And it's easy to look at, um, I was just talking to my buddy Jefferson this morning. When you're a kid, like I have a life before my kids, right? My kids don't. I'm their whole life. And now you're trying to wrap your head around what, who was your whole life. And then this just fog that's been the last 10 years. And then this guy shows up, right? So you know that inherently there, there's going to be some tension and weirdness there, right? For sure. Okay. Um, so tell you, yeah, you said he's got a past. What past are you worried about? Um. So he's... He's been married two times, which, you know, that's okay. But um, he's had three restraining orders filed against him. Oh, there's that. Lead with that next time, Kendall. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Which. What about with your daughter? I mean, your sisters. What are they experiencing inside that home? um, So there's a lot of, there's a lot of tension. Um, A part of, I think, why they mainly don't is my mom gets really defensive of the boyfriend against my sisters. Okay. Um, which since the restraining orders, he is sober, which is definitely something. Um, but he also kind of acts like a child. Yeah. Um, yeah. When the government has to step in and tell you to act like an adult, like a mature person, um, multiple times for crying out loud, I'll give you one if you have a bad weekend. Right. But my goodness. Um, yeah. So, why is your 18-year-old sister still living at home? Um, she She's a little s- slower to adapt in the world, I guess is the nicest way to put it. Um, intellectually, she just got her intellectually or she's just slow playing the world? Just kind of slow, very sheltered. Okay. Um, if your 11-year-old sister, if you offered to let her move in with you, would she do that? She's already joking about moving out. <laughs> I know, but she can't because she's a minor. But if she moved in with you, an adult, or one of your other siblings, um, you've got two other siblings somewhere? Yes. Okay. Um, would she be able to do that? 
Um, if it came to it, probably. Okay. Let's 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 play this out that you and your sister sat down with your mom and you said, Hey, I have invited little sister to come live with me and I'll get her to school and back and um I want her to just experience this. What would your mom say to that? Would she go, Oh my gosh, never? Or would she say, I think that'd be best? Um, she'd probably really freak out. And he he isn't living with her or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think she'd really freak out. Okay. Um, it might come to that level of seriousness if you have this much concern. A yeah. couple of things I want to caution you about, not caution you about, but just expand your scope of what you're seeing. Number one, it's not your dad. Right. Right. That's a big one. Number and and nobody can ever live up to the legend of that man that's in your memory, right? Right. Number two, um, he does have a concerning past. He does. Very concerning past. And as you mentioned, it sounds like maybe he's putting the work in to make some changes. Yeah, my mom says he's he's going to therapy and you know, he's he's trying to work through all of his past and his hurt. Okay. Um, the third thing is we're going to be very, very concerned about the safety of that 11-year-old girl. Yeah. And so, um, you, and you have no legal ramification at all unless you see something that is concerning, right? You hear about abuse, right. you hear about screaming, you hear about somebody punched a hole through the sheetrock, you hear about taking your mom's money, that kind of stuff. Absent that... I want you to begin being very, very intentional about creating a relationship with this 11-year-old. We go to breakfast every week, once a week, just me and her. Right. Right. And you're going to have to, as a 22-year-old, you don't have to, you're a sister, but um, sounds like you're super invested, which I'm proud of you. Um, I want you to invest heavily in the relational side. That way, if anything pops up, you're the first call. Yeah. And you're a safe place. Your 18-year-old sister, I think you need to take her out and say, hey, it's time we grow up real fast. You're 18 years old. Yeah. This little, I'm just going to stay here because the rent is free because I don't have to drive anywhere. Those days are over now. You're 18 years old. Yeah. And maybe she pays rent to you and moves in with your apartment or wh- whatever the situation is. But um, I think those are the different situa- the different conversations I'm going to have with my sister. Right. And absent breaking the law and absent abuse. Um. Your 11-year-old sister cannot like this guy all she wants, but your mom's the adult and your mom's her guardian. Yeah. Right? And if he's following all of his probationary, you know, restrictions and he's following all the rules of his restraining orders, then it is what it is. Yeah. What you can do is strengthen your two sisters with your relationship and your presence, being a safe place that your mom maybe is not right now. Yeah. Yeah. Does that sound fair? Yeah, and that's it's kind of what I've been thinking, and I've just been um, like not mean, but very blunt with my mom about things. Like he he came to the house the other day, and the eighteen he was like, "Anybody home?" And the eighteen year old was like, "No, go away." And he stormed out of the house and called my mom. This is over. I can't handle the disrespect. And da 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 da. Good. Good. And. He should not be alone at home. He shouldn't be alone at home with an 18 year old girl. Yeah. And I think that's the conversation with your mom. Mom, he has no business here being alone with an 18 year old girl. Yeah. Oh, he's not going to do nothing. He has no business being here alone with an 18 year old girl. It's not his daughter. Yeah. And if he had any brains at all, he wouldn't walk in a front door like that. Right? Yeah. And so um, maybe the conversation with your mom is, mom, I'm scared for you. Have y'all gone and just had like a lunch together, like a quiet, or does it always end up when there's a, an issue, then it turns into a fight? Um, I was thinking about taking her out. I just wanted to do this call first and pick your brain. Yeah. Um, but even when I talk to her, it, it, it doesn't, it's not like fighting. She just kind of like, oh, well, he's a good guy. <laughs> So I think there's something to be said for, hey, mom, I can't imagine how, like, in the depths of hell lonely you've been for the last decade. 
and maybe say, I miss dad so much. This idiot on a podcast the other day asked me about her. Oh, no, I, I said I wasn't going to say I was an idiot anymore. This guy on a podcast um, asked me about dad, and I just started crying. I miss him so much. Yeah. And say, Mom, I know you're so, so lonely. And I need you to know this guy makes me really uncomfortable. Yeah. He makes me not feel safe. And if you say he's great and wonderful and so kind and loving, okay. But I need you to hear me say he makes me not feel safe and I'm worried about my sisters. That's a very different, that's you taking it as an adult woman. That's you owning your feelings, you owning the way you're experiencing this, not saying you need to be doing this and you need to be doing that because if, she, if you do that to her, she's going to have to fight you back. But if you sit down and say, I have bad vibes on this. There's a bad track record here. I'm worried he's just trying to take your money. I, I, I just don't feel good about it. And also, God, you must be lonely. Right? Both and. You're acknowledging the, the, the just mess that she's been in for so long, right? And maybe tell yeah. her, gosh, man. You know what no one's probably told her in 10 years? How proud they are of her. Yeah. Because the day after your dad passed away, she had to go be a mom to five kids all by herself. Yeah. And then the day after that, and then the day after that, and then 10 years later, she's still doing it. Yeah. And there's something to be said for holding your mom's hand across the table and saying, I'm like so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Right? And sometimes when we're lonely, we go chasing somebody that will tell us, I see you got value. He may see that she's got value in assets, right? And things he could take from her. Um, yeah. Or that she's a, a desperate woman and she'll, you know, she'll make out with him or whatever, which I know is gross to think about your mom, but she's a person too. <laughs> but he, he may, you know, he, he may want to see value in other things, but having her daughter, her adult daughter sit across the table from her and just say, no, no, no mom, I see you. But this guy, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, that's a different conversation than, having a big disagreement in the house or a big fight in the house, or he storms off and makes a call and then she's embarrassed. So she bombs you guys. That's, that's just, this is just a different way to handle it. It may change nothing, but at least, you know, I did the right thing. And I, I voiced what I was experiencing as an adult in an adult mature way. And I treated my mom with dignity and respect. And yet I told the truth. All of that is to be commended. And continue to build relationships with your sisters and hear me say, at the first sign of abuse, at the first sign of something's not right, let your mom absolutely know, mom, I'm calling 911. I'm calling the police. I'm not going through you. I'm not going through him. I'm going straight to the authorities. I'm not going to have any wonky play in my house and with my sisters there. I think just let anybody know. I'm Kendall, 22 years old. I'm standing tall. I'm an adult woman. I've had a hard go of it. I miss my dad and I'm proud of my mom, but I'm drawing some firm boundaries in my life. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Call anytime. Let me know how that conversation goes because I'd love to hear how your mom responds to that. My guess is she may respond in a more receptive way than you think. I'm proud of you. 